Hi, everyone, and welcome to this edition of The Elevator. I always say we've got a special guest. We really have got a special guest. We've got Bijal Matitia, who also happens to be um, sister to a very dear friend of mine, Rickin, as well. And she is not only at Ernst & Young, but she has, and I've been looking through her profile, um, I, and I just keep seeing awards everywhere and future leader <laughs> and words come up and young leader keeps coming up. Uh, uh, and so a fantastic role model. And as you will all know, Elevator is about people who not just manage to elevate themselves, uh, uh, which is important from whichever backgrounds they come from, but also uh, more importantly, manage to elevate others. So Bijal, if I can start off with sort of the first question to you, you're at uh, Ernst & Young, Ian Y., um, how did you end up there? Because I know from your background, yeah, it's not as if you were born into a family of just people who were always, you know, professionals for three generations and so on and moved in these circles. And so how did you, how did you get there? Um, interestingly, my journey to EY was, let's say for five years before I actually joined there, I was supporting the Hindu network events there. So I was around there all the time without actually working there. So I got to know the culture and I, and I liked that they were so um, forward thinking in the DNI agenda. And I, I, I was keeping an eye out for roles, but I was very clear that I didn't want to go into a client facing role. So when I saw a DNI role advertised in the global part of the business that focused on project management and change management, it felt like for the first time I saw my sociology undergraduate and then my project management masters come together in a role where before that had always been a bit of a question mark on how to join the two. So uh, I applied for that role, um, gosh, nearly six years ago now, and uh, I'm still there and uh, not in that particular role, but still still with the firm. And you're heavily working in financial services there as well. Yes. Tell me a bit about the role. What's what's sort of day to day work like? At the moment, I'm on a secondment in the innovation team. So I'm working on innovation culture within the financial services industry. So trying to influence the culture of our people for, um, internally and change the mindset, encourage people to think about what innovation means to them and not just from a buzzword perspective, but actually like real time. What does that look like and how can they be implementing it into their daily lives? So everything from looking at um, learning, training, to looking at what that means for working with their clients, how they can be adapting solutions, products and services, and also just changing their actual mindset as well. So it's pretty varied, it's fun, um, working on a lot of comms campaigns at the moment. So bringing innovation to life through a few different lenses, and I'm enjoying that. How, how, I mean, you know, if you had to, if I sort of put you on the spot and say, look, the most important things people can do, and you'll have to generalize, um, to be more innovative, wherever they're working, what would you say those things are? What comes to mind? I think it will be what people have already been doing during lockdown. It's, it's been a time where we've all had to innovate um, in all different spheres of our life. But if you look at your workspace specifically, how we've all had to adapt to doing things because the circumstances around us have made us, you'll already be seeing how you're innovating every day in, in how you're doing meetings, how you're thinking. Um, actually, when you look at the great inventors and the great inventions of all time, most of them have come about during times of warfare. For example, if you think about Enigma, for example, uh, the evolution of technology, most of it has come out of that need where a situation has put you somewhere where you weren't necessarily expecting and you've had to innovate. Yeah, it's those difficult times, which, um, and we're all facing those difficult times at the moment. You know, people sometimes turn around uh, and they look back on their lives when they've been made redundant, let's say, and it was the worst time. And they say, yes. well, actually, it brought out my, my strengths. Are you seeing that? How are you encouraging that in others when they're going through these very difficult times mentally and in some cases financially or, you know, within the workplace? I think the first thing is to actually acknowledge that we are allowed to feel... A difficult situation we are allowed to kind of feel the emotions that come with that rather than trying to suppress them because I know that everybody's saying like let's focus on the gratitude and of course that's really important but also not to kind of push aside the other feelings that we may have during difficult times because they'll only resurface if we don't allow ourselves to feel them so first and foremost to allow ourselves to kind of acknowledge that and then um 
sometimes these situations allow us to think about things that we didn't have time to before for example like a particular skill set that you might want to nurture that having more time has allowed you to or connecting I've seen a lot of people connecting again after a long time because of lockdown and that's been really nice and sometimes that connection that network like how we have um, allows for like a different a different thought process connecting you to someone that maybe could help you to find your next role or, or to really leverage the situation that you find yourself in in, in a positive way um if, if that kind of answers your question and be, and be sure. proactive it's a bit of a roundabout like, exactly yeah to be the, proactive yeah and reach out to people where you do need help or advice and not, absolutely and, and, and yeah yeah i have now, to say every yeah. single one of my roles from when I graduated um, has come through that networking process, that mentorship, um, making sure that you're um, supporting others and being supported. Yeah, and, and this has come out in some of our other interviews where yes. um, we, what's happened is we, we, we sort of try to get across to people that, you know, don't think people will assume you want to move ahead or that you're not facing any problems or that you know, you've got to go out there and say, Absolutely. look, I need help with this. Or I want advice with this. Or these are my ambitions. Please, can you advise or help me? Absolutely. Them? Absolutely. There's so much in that, what you've just said about um, being vulnerable, about being honest, having that conversation and saying, you know, this is where I want to be in two years, five years, 10 years can you advise me on what steps might be helpful? And you can have that conversation with multiple people that you trust, people who are at the point in your career that you want to be at, people that are two years ahead of you. And um, I don't think anybody would ever mind helping you in that way because it's not a competition, ultimately. We're all on our own journey and, and um, going there with that vulnerability, but also being that person for others is never gonna leave you behind. In fact, it will only help you in your own, in your own journey. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I think that's fantastic advice, especially given your experiences within EMY and helping other people uh, achieve their goals. Now, you know, when I look through your bio, um, diversity keeps coming up, um, inclusiveness. But let me put it to you this way. The Chinese aren't diverse and neither are the Japanese. And those are the second and third largest economies in the world. We don't need diversity, do we? We just need homogeneity. We just need everybody to look the same, don't we? Yeah. Well, there's much to say about both of those cultures that's really fascinating. But what we can say is that from a business perspective, um, diversity and inclusion isn't just the right thing to do. It's actually business sense, because if we all are the same and we all look the same and we all think the same, we're not actually going to be able to push ahead in, in our ideas, in, in the way that we do things, in the way that we think. We'll literally just be in a room with people that that look and feel like us, you know, and, and in that sense, nothing will ever really move forward. There's so much merit. We've seen so much happen in the world recently that has encouraged us to look in the mirror, to think about our own our own sense of purpose, our own sense of how we look at others, our own sense of how we treat others, any nuances that we may have grown up with thinking that, no, but this is just the normal way of doing things, or this is, it's okay to speak like this, or it's okay to ask that question. And uh, lots of microaggressions that we may use on a daily basis that actually can be quite offensive to other people. And I think that in the last few months, we've all been held accountable to these things. Something that we need to constantly uh, learn about something that we need to constantly keep educating ourselves on and if you look at that in the workplace it directly translates to how we treat our colleagues our peers how we interview people how we might think about things that in in another culture may be considered offensive um, but actually like how we can come together in diversity and, and make amazing things happen yeah, no, absolutely. With um, and, and you know, you talked about adversity at times of of war. When you look at the teams who you know did work on Enigma, or whether for good or ill, um, the atomic bomb. The, 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 those are people from many different cultures um, who are trying to bring um, peace to the world. So you're, you're and and um, you're, you're absolutely correct. And the EY is obviously an example of that with all its 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 global offices. They've been a great supporter of us and Department of International Trade as well. Um, I just want to touch upon your your mentor at the Girls Network, uh, which empowers girls from disadvantaged communities. You're an educator and ambassador at Binti Period, which works on menstrual education globally. Why and how did you choose 
obviously you're female i know about obviously gender is mm -hmm. one reason why do you why and how do you choose the causes that you've um been supporting i think it just comes down to like what that pull is we all have limited amount of time but sometimes you come across a charity and, and it, it makes you feel something it makes you feel that this is something i care about and because we all have limited time we do have to kind of follow that calling when we are choosing where to give our, our spare time. And for me, the girls network resonated, I guess, because I don't come from like a very affluent background. At the same time, I definitely wasn't deprived of anything. Uh, my parents took all the sacrifices that I'm sure many of ours did to make sure that our education was at absolute forefront of everything, whatever sacrifices had to be made. And so the girls network really resonated with me because their focus is on girls from uh, less, what, how, what's the correct term here? So I guess their situation could be that they might be the first in their family to go to university, right? Yeah. So they say disadvantaged communities and by connecting them with mentors who are working um, in professional services, for example, or to be honest, the mentors have a very diverse range of, of roles. But all it does is it connects you to someone that you wouldn't otherwise be connected to. Yeah. And where you or I could have um, a family friend, our parents say, yeah. oh, you want to do work experience, talk to this person or this person. We know that power of that network. We've already talked to it. And so what we're doing here with the Girls Network is facilitating that exchange, connecting them yeah. with someone that they wouldn't otherwise be able to connect to, um, supporting them with their UCAS applications, supporting yeah. them with interview skills, life skills, perhaps recommending a book that they maybe wouldn't have come across otherwise. And in a safe space, in a safeguarded way, supporting these young females to really achieve their potential so that when they go into university, which is where you kind of part ways in a formal sense, you make sure that they're going with their best foot forward to whichever degree yeah. that you can. And of course, all really of that, powerful. the bottom line is it results in social mobility. Absolutely. Um, and, and it helps them fulfill their potential. I mean, my wife often says she didn't have somebody mm. to tell her how to, you know, write that CV, do that interview. Um, and we, you and I might take it for granted because we were lucky enough that somebody might as, or we fumbled into the right answer. Um, uh, uh, now, we're both uh, part of City Hindus Network. Thank you very much for being uh, uh, part of City Hindus Network. And you're also leading the Hindu Network within EY. What are your ambitions for that? How does how does Hinduism fit into uh, uh, the day job? Is it sort of separate and compartmentalized? Uh, uh, you know, how is it part of your sort of day to day life? Yeah, initially, I think I thought it would fit into like this really neat box and that it would be like side of desk and I'd be able to allocate certain hours to it. But uh, you'll probably be able to resonate here in knowing that it doesn't actually work like that yeah. because it's so um, ingrained in us and it infiltrates all the aspects of everything else. So what we try to do is uh, we're actually working together with all the other faith groups. Uh, we now have an interfaith network as well. So we try to do lots around collaboration and and sharing different thoughts ideas we have podcasts obviously at the moment everything's virtual and in terms of ambitions for it I find that Hinduism the Vedas the teachings that we have in front of us and available to us they're so applicable to every other aspect of our life including our work life including our home lives the application of like mindfulness and meditation we've seen has absolutely exploded and you almost can't get through a day without somebody talking about it so when you look at where all of this comes from and originates from our teachings are so applicable that we can be sharing them with others and and our events are very um open to to everybody they're very inclusive so we do get a whole range of people in the room when we are able to have face-to-face -face events of course and from that i believe that whether it's for example leadership skills that you're trying to look at or whether it's teaming or whether it's for example overcoming failures um Whatever it is, the topic that we're trying to look at from a work perspective, you can find those answers in our scriptures. And therefore, all of our events that we do, and this continues to be the strategy and the goal, let's make sure that all the skills that we're trying to encourage people are actually shared in a way that's practical. And so that's why our events are always focused around these practical skill sets and then drawing upon 
where those teachings come from in a way that's accessible for people rather than just hey this happened 5,000 years ago it's a story but no actually how can we be translating these things across and and soon we'll be seeing that with the um, Diwali event that we've got coming up so again what lessons can we take from a leadership perspective from the story of Diwali that we hear about every year and continues to be one of our major marked festivals what can we be sharing with our colleagues? How can we be including them in into um, such a big celebration for us? And and how can we make sure that we as Hindus are, are sharing those teachings in a way that our colleagues can actually enjoy and participate in and, and feel like they can celebrate that with us as well? Yeah, I really like that. I will keep an eye out for that. And I'm, I'm sure we'll do things together um, with EY's uh, Hindu Network and City Hindus Network as well. I, I really um, like how you're bringing, um, well, ancient wisdom to the modern day and, 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 and making it practical uh, for people so they don't just roll their eyes and go, oh, God, I'm going to get a sermon. Um, yeah. They say, oh, actually, yeah, this is, really, this is really helpful. It's not just Anthony Robbins has got all the latest wisdom. Right. But there might be something to say for something from 5,000 years ago as well, which has got, um, uh, uh, which is an incredible self-help guide at one level. Uh, There's just so much. There's so much. And we do see a lot of that, like you said, brought out in the books that a lot of people are reading now around self-help. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think they started teaching at, I think it was Harvard. Um, they started teaching business lessons from the the Gita. And I give a uh, an annual lecture to business people on business lessons from the Gita at my yeah. um, old university as well. Um, Bijal, we better let you go because um, uh, uh, EY, uh, I know their <laughs> hourly rate and it's not fair on <laughs> them and the partners to keep you too long uh, on this. Uh, thank you very much. Congratulations, all the successes. Um, uh, I know this year also you became um, one of the 100 women of the future leaders uh, for, now is it pronounced heroes or heroes? I think it's heroes. Heroes, but it's the capitalized H-E-R. Yes. <laughs> and so it's, it's spelt heroes, but H-E-R is capitalized because they're women future leaders as well. So congratulations. Thank you. On that. I could go on with all of them, but there's so many and we will make sure there's a, a, a link to your LinkedIn profile as Thank you. well. Thank you so much for being an inspiring leader within both the, the community in, in the sort of small sense, but community in the broader sense for the UK as well. Uh, Bijal Matitya, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.